for a limited time, $1 gets you full access to all the automotive industry news and content CBTNews.com has to offer. CBT News. Subscribe today. Welcome to CBT News with Bridget Fitzpatrick. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to CBT News. I'm Bridget Fitzpatrick. Thank you so much for joining us. Here's Chris Riggins with today's top stories. Thanks, Bridget. GM has confirmed the release of an all-electric version of its flagship Cadillac Escalade later this year. In addition, the electric Escalade is anticipated to utilize the same GM Ultium battery cell motors and technologies that the automaker uses to power its next generation EVs. As the company plans to convert Cadillac into an all EV brand by 2030, analysts expect the vehicle to go into production and on sale as soon as 2024. On May 22nd, Ford revealed a series of new deals for the supply of lithium products in support of its ambitious plan to significantly boost EV production over the next few years. By 2026, the automaker anticipates producing EVs at a rate of 2 million units per year. One of the deals is with Albemarle, which will supply more than 100,000 metric tons of lithium hydroxide to Ford, enough to produce nearly 3 million EV batteries between 2026 and 2030. Five randomly selected Faith Academy students with perfect attendance were given the chance to win a car from the used car dealer Drive Casa. Over the last five years, the Academy and the used dealer have held a competition to boost student attendance. Sophomore Joanna Castillo was this year's lucky winner. Mark Gallus, the CEO of Drive Casa, told Dallas Fox affiliate KDFW, quote, the passion that I've seen here in the last seven years and the support they give to these students, I want to shake their hand and give a hug to every person that works at this school. A recent customer poll conducted by KPMG found that roughly 50% of gasoline and diesel vehicle owners have considered switching to a hybrid or EV. While weather and population density are shaping variations in demand across regions, the results show that hybrid and EVs are the most popular in the Pacific and mountain areas, but least popular in the Midwest. Affordability remains an obstacle for several potential EV buyers. According to Gary Silberg, KPMG's global automotive industry leader, quote, a lot of people are excited about the opportunity, but I don't know how many people can afford it. Don't go anywhere. Coming up next is Alan Haig, president and founder of Haig Partners. We'll be right back. Delivering the news dealers count on for 10 years. Subscribe today and join thousands of other automotive professionals. CBT News, 10 years strong. As the automotive retail market experiences a slowdown in transaction activity, where does that leave dealership values? On today's Inside Automotive, we're pleased to be joined once again by the president and founder of Haig Partners, Alan Haig, to discuss dealership values today. Check it out. So what's the biggest trend impacting dealership values today? Profits. It's still about profits. Okay. Uh, we have profits have come down about 8 10% from the peak where they were last year. Mm. They're still more than twice where they were before the pandemic hit. Okay. Uh, but there is a slight decline and that's beginning to impact dealership values. We saw dealership values peak probably in the middle of last year and then as conditions have gotten a little bit tougher in the business meaning a little bit lower PVRs. The public companies just recorded their Q1 2023 PVRs were down about 14% mm. from where they were at the same time last year. Sure. Used vehicle PVRs are down about the same. Uh, overall profits are only down about 8.5% mm -hmm. because the fixed ops business is so strong. But uh, the cumulative impact of, of the decline in, in the profits plus higher interest rates for buyers means that um, we see values down about 14% okay. from the peak where they were last year. Okay. And how are stores being valued? I think at the end of the day, dealers have to expect that they're going to be getting the future profits, not the historical profits. But it's a challenge to project what those are going to look like. Mm -hmm. Some franchises have declined more than others. For instance, uh, Stellantis had a big fall in profits in the fourth quarter and first quarter because they just had the wrong mix of vehicles there for customers to choose. Sure. 
other dealership profits are still strong and going up. I mean, the Toyota business is, is red hot. Uh, and, and we also see luxury stores doing quite well. So I think for, for dealers, for buyers, it's a little challenge to say, well, how long will these current conditions continue, meaning these elevated PVRs? What's going to happen with the mix when volume goes up and margins go down? How's that going to net out? Mm -hmm. Will fixed operations continue to be as strong as they have been? What can they expect to pay for debt over the next five or six years of, of that term loan? So there are a lot of variables are going into it. Uh, but what we're seeing so far is that values are down a little bit from where they were last year. Okay. But dealership blue sky values are still more than twice what they were before the pandemic hit us in the beginning of wow. 2020. All right. Be sure to watch this interview in its entirety right here at CBTnews.com. That wraps up our show for today, but we invite you to join us back here again tomorrow morning for all the latest news and trends impacting the retail automotive industry. And be sure to follow us on TikTok, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. I'm Bridget Fitzpatrick. Thanks for watching and have a great day. CBT News, your number one resource for auto industry news and content. Join the number one most watched newscast in the automotive industry. CBT News. Subscribe today.